Hey everyone, today I'm back in Final Fantasy to talk about our new Paladin. In yesterday's patch, Paladin got a pretty significant rework that changed it from a sustained damage job into a burst damage job and because of that change there have also been a lot of adjustments to the rotation itself. So I'll first be going over all of the changes as they are listed in the patch notes or at least the important ones. Then I'll do a little bit of show and tell on a striking dummy and then I'll just kind of give my thoughts on the changes themselves in the later part of the video. So, first things first, Fight or Flight has now been changed from increasing your physical damage dealt by 25% to now just giving you a 25% damage increase. It's important because this is going to be the one damage buff that we're going to be playing around now. Requiescat was changed to now just do something else, um, so it's no longer going to be giving you that magical damage buff where we use our magical rotation like before. And we have Sheltron. This effect has been changed from just blocking incoming attacks to now giving you a 15% damage reduction instead. And that also applies to Holy Sheltron, where you get 15% damage reduction from the Sheltron effect, another 15% in the first 4 seconds, and then you still get the regen from Knight's Benediction as well. Goring Blade has been completely changed. This is now a standalone GCD that just does a bunch of damage and is on a 60 second recast timer, scaling with skill speed. If you have to like compare it to something, think about Sonic Break from Gunbreaker. Divine Veil also got changed to now pretty much work like Shake It Off from Warrior. Instead of having to press the button, getting a 30 second buff, hoping that one of your healers or one of your own abilities heals you, and then procking the shield for the rest of your teammates while also healing them, now it's basically going to be you press the button, you heal everyone, you give everyone a shield, and you're done. And, as a bonus, it now also applies to the Paladin itself, which is quite a nice change. Then, Royal Authority and Prominence, our two combo finishers for single target and AoE, now have a bonus effect of granting you the Divine Might buff. Now, this is a buff that will affect your Holy Spirit and your Holy Circle, your two magical spells. And it will do the same thing for both of them. It'll increase the potency of the spell and it will also make it so that they no longer have a cast time. Requiescat will still technically do the same, because both of these spells now have three potencies, a potency of just hard casting it, a potency under Divine Might, and a potency under Requiescat, but you never want to use Requiescat on Holy Spirit or Holy Circle, because of how it now interacts with our Confiti or combo instead. So while you can still use Requiescat for Holy Spirit in low-level gameplay, like when you unlock Requiescat and Holy Spirit, you still use them together, but as soon as you unlock the Confit your combo, you do want to be using your Requiescat stacks on Confiteor itself and then the three following combo actions. And then last but not least, kind of going back to the defensive aspect that I kind of forgot about, Bulwark is coming back, which is a 90 second cooldown that will give us 10 seconds of blocking incoming attacks. Paladin always kind of lacked like its own unique personal mitigation like Trail of Battle, Camouflage, and I think it's Dark Mind for Dark Knight and now they have Bulwark back. I always kind of thought about it that like their missing personal mitigation is the fact that they have two party mitigations in that of Divine Veil as well as Passage of Arms, but they've decided to give this to Paladin as well. So they are a lot more solid when it comes down to their personal mitigation now because they have that extra cooldown in Bulwark and they also have the stronger Holy Sheltron. So let's then go to the striking dummy and kind of talk about how Paladin works now. So, when it comes down to our single target stuff, we essentially only have one combo, and that is going to be our Royal Authority combo. Now, after we finish Royal Authority, we are still going to be getting our three Sword of stacks, which we can spend on our atonements, just like before, nothing has changed here. But you can see I also have a buff that is now buffing my Holy Spirit and my Holy Circle. You can also see them lighting up on my hotbar. All I need to do is just press it, and there we go, that is basically the buff consumed. Now, as I mentioned before, you can also get your stronger Holy Spirits while under Requiescat. But the cool thing is, when Requiescat is active and you have the Holy Spirit buff, you actually will be eating your Holy Spirit buff first. So if I go and start my Requiescat combo right here, I can slot in a Holy Spirit wherever I want without breaking my combo and also without eating into the Requiescat stacks, which is very important. Um, because sometimes you might want to like early press Requiescat or something because of fight timers or whatnot. I'm not quite sure how our new Paladin is going to be in that regard. In terms of our AoE combo, as I mentioned before, this one will also give us this buff. But then instead we're going to be using it on Holy Circle uh, to get our damage like that. 
In terms of fight or flight, that is of course going to be our only damage buff that we have now. So we want to be using this every minute to fit in our burst rotation. And then we also have Goring Blade. This is again a standalone GCD that does not interrupt your combos either. So let's say for example, I get my stacks up. We can actually use a lot of things without breaking our combos. If I start my Requiescat combo right here, or my Confiteer combo, I can flit in a Goring Blade if I forgot to use it, I can fit in a Holy Spirit, and I can just keep going with the combo itself. And of course this works for your physical combo too. The only thing that is going to be breaking your combo is going to be using an Atonement. Atonement still breaks your combos, uh, breaks your magical combo as well, so you want to make sure that you don't do that. Now, in terms of the rotation itself, we're basically going to be getting ourselves that Holy Spirit buff, Divine Might. We're going to be using our Fight or Flight, going into our Requiescat, and then we are dumping our Confiteor combo, as that is going to be our highest damage combo. And then, of course, we're using our off-global cooldowns as well, uh, whenever we can do that. Now, after we've done our opener, we essentially go into a one-minute loop that will vary a little bit depending on your skill speed. Now, there are currently two rotations that people are experimenting with. There is a one-minute loop, which I will be showing you today. There's also a two-minute loop that utilizes hard-casted Holy Spirit. Now, I'm personally not a fan of hard-casting Holy Spirit, so I'm just going to be learning the one-minute rotation, and that's also the one that I'll be showing to you guys. So the rotation goes a little something like this. First gonna be starting with getting ourselves our buff to buff our Holy Spirit. Then we're gonna be using our Holy Spirit. Our other off global cooldowns, we're getting our Requiescat, and then we basically finish off the little burst window with our Requiescat itself. Now, when it comes down to the loop, the loop after the opener is a little bit different than the one that you will be using um, as you're like just looping through a full uptime scenario. And that is because we again have a 63 second rotation. So we're gonna have to drop one GCD somewhere and ideally that is going to be one of our uh, atonements that we are going to be dropping. So right now I'm still gonna be using all of them um, because we are just after the opener. But once we are into the actual looping rotation after the one minute, uh, then we are going to be dropping one atonement before our burst. So right here, I'm not gonna be using my Holy Spirit because our Holy Spirit, while it is buffed, is quite strong. So I'm going to be using that inside our fight or flight instead. Uh, my skill speed is also a little bit weird, uh, so that's my my uh, buffs don't really line up all that nicely. Finish it off again, get all of our stuff back, and then we just go back into our blade combo. And then you'll be able to see that we can fit in our last Holy Spirit right before our fight or fight buff drops as well. And then we can just do our atonements and kind of just loop from there. So, just keeping things going as usual, using our off-global cooldowns as they come up. This is a Holy Spirit that we can kind of use wherever you want to. Of course, Holy Spirit is still a ranged action, so if you need it to keep up time, where you normally have to disengage from the boss, you can kind of try and keep it like that. Um, but you can't stack the buff, so that is something that you do have to keep in mind. And then here, we're almost about to go back into our burst window, so we use two atonements instead of three. Uh, it can also be you only use one atonement, depending on your skill speed. And then you go back into the burst like before. Make sure you use that Goring Blade, it's a little bit awkward, because it's kind of out there. And then we just finish it off with our Blade combo again. And that is kind of what the new Paladin looks like. It's fairly straightforward to play. It feels a little bit awkward because, of course, it's a very different playstyle from what we used to have before. But a lot of the principles are still the same. Like, you use Requiescat, you go into your Confiteor combo, you use your normal Royal Authority, you get your three Atonements, that kind of stuff. It's just that you now also get this one free Holy Spirit to use somewhere in the rotation, as long as you don't overstep your gauge. Like, for example, here, I can still just, like, wait it out. Oh, I need to disengage. I use my Holy Spirit, I get back in, and I can just keep my rotation going like that. It's totally fine. Um, just make sure that you don't overcap, and then of course, make sure to drop one or two atonements, depending on your skill speed, before going back into our burst right here. And then of course, get the Holy Spirit buff back, use the Gordon Blade, and then we go into our Confiteor combo again, and then just like before, 
This is basically how Paladin loops if you are playing the one minute rotation. And that is the end of our burst window right there. So that's kind of like a little showcase of how the new Paladin works. Let's then kind of go over my thoughts of our new Paladin. Well, I think this job feels pretty good to play now. I already quite enjoyed playing Paladin before in Endwalker, quite enjoyed the changes that they did to the job. Um, but of course, one of the issues was that Final Fantasy is essentially a burst game. And as long as you're playing with raid buffs, most classes that are burst classes are going to be performing better than others because they can play into those raid buffs much better. And Paladin being a sustained damage job never really was that great at it. Like looking in a vacuum, Paladin alone on a full uptime fight did fine, but as soon as you start factoring in downtime, as soon as you start factoring in the fact that raid buffs are affecting you as well, Paladin's performance was dropping quite a bit compared to the other tanks, which is why they decided to turn it into a burst job. The only thing that I dislike about Paladin right now is how Goring Blade functions. As I mentioned before, we are dropping one atonement out of our rotation, and that is because Paladin has a 63 second rotation. This is a problem that they have always had, and even with this rework, they still have this problem. Now, of course, depending on your skill speed, you need to drop one extra atonement, um, but because my skill speed is fairly low, I only need to drop one of them, not two. But if we are, of course, going to be min-maxing, and let's say the slower GCD ends up being the more efficient build route for Paladin to go, then if they just were to get rid of Goring Blade, it would fix this problem of having to drop GCDs. And that's kind of like something that I kind of expected them to do. Like Goring Blade right now, while it is essentially a copy of Sonic Break from Gunbreaker, doesn't really fit with Paladin in my opinion. Sonic Break was there for Gunbreaker when the job came out, and it's something that we got used to playing around with. Uh, then in Endwalker they added double down, so we now have these two standalone GCDs that we are using for big burst underneath our damage buff. With Paladin, I can kind of understand that they want to keep Goring Blade in the rotation, but it doesn't fit. It's kind of awkward to use. A lot of the times, like when I first started learning to play this new Paladin, I would just forget about it. Uh, when I was doing the Extreme Trial yesterday with my Static, Goring Blade was often just forgotten about because it just doesn't really have a place in the rotation right now. Exact same thing that they did with Ninja's Shadow Fang back in the day when they did the rework. They just turned it into this standalone GCD that you would press during Trick Attack once, and it just felt kind of awkward and it was sometimes forgotten about. Now, of course, once people get more experience on the new Paladin, it just becomes part of your rotation, you get used to it, but it just feels out of place. And especially with the rotation being this, we have one GCD too many, I feel like they could have just gotten rid of Goring Blade or alternatively made it into an off-global cooldown, kind of like Carve and Spit for Dark Knight. They could have totally done that and it would have been fine. That's kind of like my only gripe that I have with Paladin though at the moment is Goring Blade because everything else does feel pretty good. You still have your normal 1-2-3 combo that then gives you that enhanced Holy Spirit. If you don't have a specific point in time where you need to use it to keep uptime during a disengaging uh, scenario from the boss, then you can just use it as you get it. If you do know that there is downtime coming up, you can kind of save it for there to have a ranged attack. Of course, your whole Confiteor combo is still a ranged combo as well, which is really nice. Uh, I guess the only thing that I kind of was expecting to have happen is maybe Requiescat becoming a ranged attack as well, because Requiescat also still requires you to be pretty much next to the boss when you use it. But after using Requiescat, you can disengage for like four, technically five GCDs even, if you still have your Divine Might buff for Holy Spirit as well. The alternative rotation, the two minute one that I didn't talk about, has more Holy Spirit usages and it basically is a little bit more flexible than the one that I showed you. The one minute rotation is really nice because it is very straightforward and it's literally just a one minute loop that you need to learn. Where it does kind of fall off though is when there is longer downtime that requires you to use multiple Holy Spirits in order to keep uptime because then you have to like manipulate your stuff a little bit more. And that is something that you can do with the two minute rotation because it has more Holy Spirit costs in the rotation itself. It means that keeping uptime when you have to move away from the boss is going to be easier as well because you have multiple usages 
advantages of that ranged attack. Again, personally, I probably would just recommend you try out the one minute rotation first and see how that works for you to maybe get used to this new paladin first. And then if you still feel like you want more flexibility in your rotation, you can move over to the two minute rotation, try that one out, see how that goes for you. But I'll personally be sticking to the one minute loop um, because I just don't really like having cast times on my tanks. In terms of the other stuff that they did with Paladin, with like the changes to the defensive stuff, totally fine with that. Sheltron feels really good to use right now. Having your Divine Veil just instantly proc is really nice as well, especially when you're playing in Duty Finder or in Party Finder. You can't always have this communication of being like, I'll use Veil here, just make sure you do an AoE heal or something to then get that shield on your party. You can just be like, oh, I see an AoE incoming, let me press my Divine Veil and I don't need my team to actually proc it for me or I don't need to make sure that I have like a Holy Spirit ready to proc it myself. It just all works like that. And then of course the added defensive utility of having Bulwark as well, while it might not be a super strong um, like cooldown because it's just blocking, it is still going to be really nice because for example, Camouflage on Gunbreaker is really nice as well. Bulwark's really strong in dungeons. It's also only a 90 second cooldown itself, so you're gonna have it ready quite often. And that plus the buff on Holy Sheltron is just going to make it so that Paladin is a whole lot more survivable on their own as well right now, uh, which is something that they were lacking a little bit. And it still brings this stellar party utility of having both Divine Veil as well as having Passage of Arms. So first impressions of our new Paladin, pretty good, feels good to play, uh, it's kind of nice to like have a burst window to be working around now as well, so playing into downtime and such is going to feel a whole lot better, and also playing into raid buffs is going to feel a lot more satisfying as well. So I am a fan of the new Paladin, I'm going to be playing around with it a little bit more to kind of see what my thoughts are in the long run, I guess you could say, um, but first impressions are definitely really good, and I can definitely recommend people to give it a try as well. Because um, I've been enjoying it so far and maybe it'll click with some other people as well now that they changed it a little bit. Downtime does feel a little bit empty maybe because we're just hitting your 1, 2, 3 and then your atonements plus the 1 Holy Spirit. But luckily enough, your burst itself is quite lengthy so it doesn't really feel like the downtime is all that that. And yeah, those are pretty much my first impressions on Paladin. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about the new job. Have you tried it so far? Uh, are you looking forward to giving it a try if you haven't had a chance to try it out yet? Uh, let me know down below what your thoughts are on it. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for their support. And I'll see you in the next one.